Hey, this is Bill from Calvert Percussion with another weekly shop update. Uh, first of all, if you are in the Boston area and around this weekend, uh, Saturday, June 15th, Cambridge Symphony Orchestra is performing at Kresge Auditorium at MIT at 8 p.m. And on that program is, among things, Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, in which I'll be playing Off a Clyde, which is weird enough. But also, uh, those giant bass chimes that I've been talking about for a while, are you can actually go see them and hear them in person. They're pretty awesome. Uh, additionally, the orchestra is using that 25 by 36 concert bass drum that we did, uh, one of our rope tension concert field drums, and, and a bunch of other stuff that we made. So uh, if you are around in the Boston area this Saturday, it's going to be, uh, I think, it's going to be a really great concert, and um, you get to see some of the more unusual percussion instruments that we've made here. So um, if you're around, just check that out. So on the stuff that we're working on, first of all, uh, this is on its way to being like the coolest kid's drum set ever. Um, I talked about this a couple videos ago, I think my, my mechanic, this dude Jimmy um, at, uh, at Twins Auto on, on Dorchester Ave in Dorchester, which he's uh, like the car whisperer, man, if, if you ever, if you're in Boston and you need a new mechanic, you check this guy out. Um, anyway, he's got two, uh, two twin boys uh, between five and six years old, and they both just think drumming is the coolest thing ever, so he got him one of those, uh, those kits you could buy on Amazon for like 60 bucks or 80 bucks or something. Um, don't buy those. Uh, it's it's just you're, it's it's gonna wind up in the landfill. That's what it is. Um, but uh, but like most parents, you know, he didn't. He's like, oh, cool, drum set. Um, so got the kids that they tore through it in no time. And so he was talking to me. He's like, hey, you know, could you could you make something that's still like on a on a budget, you know, and uh, Bobby something legit. So yeah, so this is a 16 inch kit and um, a 12 inch floor tom, and uh, there's a 10 inch snare that's, that's almost finished. And um, yeah, this thing is gonna be awesome. Uh, I think it's really important with kids uh, to give them instruments that are actual instruments. Uh, if, you're, if you're actually trying to inspire some kind of like uh, musical involvement throughout the life of a child, giving them an instrument that's just like not really playable is is not inspiring and it can be very discouraging and at various stages of, of education. So anyway, um, I think it's really important when making instruments for children to still make a beautiful playable instrument that produces a beautiful sound. Um, so that's what this is, I'm really proud of it. Um, also, speaking of education, these are seven Tycho-ish drums going to um, a uh, school outside of Chicago pretty soon. Uh, they wanted Tycho's for their, uh, for their marching band show, for their use in the front ensemble. Uh, they didn't really have the budget to go all out on like serious traditional Tycho drums. Um, so, uh, so we kind of went back and forth with, with what they could afford versus what they needed. And rather than doing the traditional stave construction where we're going with, with regular laminated shells like we normally use, uh, they're gonna be uh, rope tension. Um, but they're going to be used entirely outdoors. They didn't want to use, you know, um, uh, calfskin or, or horsehide or like the, the very traditional materials. Um, so we're going to use synthetic heads, probably Evans Caftone. I haven't hundred percent decided yet. And they want to be able to change the heads. So, um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to lace through the heads, even like the, the Remo, uh, skin deep heads that they use on their Tyco ish drums. Um, I didn't, I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to have counter hoops so that uh, changing heads wouldn't be such a nightmare. They could just, you know, yeah, yeah you got to deal with the ropes, but then it's just it's a normal head. You just put it on the drum, tighten it up, you're good to go. So what we decided to do was make counter hoops and kind of do it like, like you would with a djembe. Um, so we start with just regular steel rod stock and bend that into hoops, cut the excess, weld them, and powder coat them. And then you have these uh, these steel hoops that are good to go. And then from here, um, I kind of went back and forth on whether we should, you know, weld on tabs for the rope or how we would do it. But um, it just in terms of trying to maintain the traditional look, that just really wasn't going to work for me. So we decided that we would go, uh, you know, with with the way uh, counter hoops are on like a djembe or a shiko or something like that, where this gets wrapped with uh, with cloth and then you use rope to make the mounting points for the, the rope that actually tensions the drum to go through. Um, so that's a pretty interesting project. It, it kind of presented some unusual challenges and uh, we're not out of the woods yet on that, but I'm 
I'm feeling really good about about how these are like our, our sort of functional plan for these instruments, and I think they're going to be really cool. So I'm excited to see how those turn out, and um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll have those to show pretty soon. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work, but um, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.